Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and a special welcome to any visitors that we have with us. We're glad to have you here and invite you to come and be with us again. We welcome those who join us via the FM radio out in the parking lot. We're glad to have you join us as well. And also a reminder that our worship services are video recorded and are available for you to view in the church website. This Father's Day, we want to especially uh, congratulate and give thanks for uh, fathers and men who have been important in our lives of faith. And we wish you a very blessed day, and we hope your family treats you well. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing to him. Of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
Let us pray. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Luther's Small Catechism, the Sacrament of the Altar, Section 2. What is the benefit of such eating and drinking? The words given for you and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin show us that forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation are given to us in the sacrament through these words. Because where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. The first lesson is from the 65th chapter of Isaiah. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hand all day long to be to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not following their own devices. A people, a people who provoke me to my faith continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sits inside tombs and spends the night in secret places, who eats swine flesh with broth of a abominable things in their vessels who say, 
keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostril, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their lap their inequities and their ancestors' inequities together, says the Lord, because they offered an incense on the mountain and revel me on the hill. I will measure into their lap full payment for their action. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judea's inheritors of my mountain. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. Here is the reading. The Psalms today is Psalm 22. Be not far away, O Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horn of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him. O offspring of Israel, all of you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise or abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them, but when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All of the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. The second lesson is from the third chapter of Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our sorry, disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a di disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offering, heirs according to the promise. Here in the reading. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? Have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The eighth chapter. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High, God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit, 
to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion! For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus... They found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city, how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I have to admit, this is one of the gospel texts that most pastors don't choose to preach on. In fact, sometimes when pastors are asked on this day what you're going to preach on, the answer is another text. In fact, this text was not even included in the LBW lectionary, but was added in the Revised Common lectionary for this Sunday. So we'll give it our best try. A couple of weeks ago, I watched the commemorations of D-Day. I saw that this year there was a visit to the beaches by one of the survivors who was nearing a hundred years of age. The commentator, immediately before the clip, said this would be his last visit. To the site. The man visited the graves of those killed during the invasion, paying tribute with his presence and his salute. Afterward, as he was interviewed and thanked for being a hero, he stopped the reporter short. Pointing to the graves, he said, They are the heroes. We do remember remember D-Day as a very important day of invasion that began the eventual defeat of the evil of Hitler and Nazism in Europe. I thought about this event as I considered the gospel lesson for today Because I suggest what we hear happening in our gospel text is an invasion of God 
into a broken situation. This portion of the Gospel of Luke tells us about Jesus' ministry in the north, in Galilee. Just before today's lesson, Jesus had decided to cross the Sea of Galilee to go to its eastern shore. We're not told why Jesus decided to do this, only that he did. Now the Sea of Galilee is actually a big lake, about 13 miles long by 8 miles wide. While crossing, a storm came up and threatened the boat, and Jesus was asleep in, down in the stern, but the disciples, panicking with fear for their lives, woke him up. Jesus told the wind and the waves to calm, and they did. And we are told the disciples marveled and asked among themselves who this Jesus was that the wind and the sea obeyed him. In our gospel lesson, we're told that the place where Jesus and the disciples arrived was the region of the Gerasenes. This is the first instance of God's invasion. The region of the Gerasenes was non-Jewish, what we call Gentile territory. This is important because a Jewish rabbi and his disciples would normally never enter into Gentile territory. Such territory would be considered hostile and even dangerous. Jesus and his disciples could be attacked and killed because they were foreigners, Jews. But God, through Jesus, invades this territory, bringing the presence of God even where it is not readily welcomed. Immediately upon disembarking from the boat, Jesus is met by a man possessed by demons. And here we have the second instance of invasion, as Jesus confronts the forces of darkness that oppose God. This man was in a bad situation. We are told he is homeless and naked. Think of some of the pictures we see from our cities these days. We are told he lives in the tombs outside of town. Probably these were caves on the seashore where the dead were placed. We are told that when the evil spirit sees the man, the people of the town would try to put him under guard in chains and shackles, but he simply breaks them and runs into the deserted places in the area. The deserted places, the wilderness, are seen as the dwelling place of Satan, the devil. So Jesus, in confronting the man, is invading the spiritual realm that wants to fight against God. There's an interesting juxtaposition here between the demoniac, and the disciples. The disciples are asking about Jesus, who is this? The demoniac knows who Jesus is. Jesus, he says, son of the most high God. The man cries out asking Jesus to leave him alone. But Jesus is not going to leave the man possessed and he orders the demons to depart. The demons beg not to be sent to hell and request to be sent into the village's herd of swine. Jesus gave them permission to enter the herd, and when they entered the pigs, the herd stampeded into the sea and were drowned. The demons ended up where they did not want to go, and Jesus was victorious in his battle 
with the forces of darkness. The swine herdsmen saw all this and ran back to the village and reported what had happened. This indicates Jesus' third instance of invasion, the invasion of the political and social realm of the community. You see, it's interesting that Jesus asked the demon's name, and it responds, Legion, indicating not one, but many demons. A legion was a unit of fighting force in the Roman army. 6,000 men comprised of spearmen, light-armed infantry, the main experienced infantry, the reserves, and the cavalry. The community, which Jesus was on the outskirts of, was under the control of Rome. And doubtless they had seen the legion march through many times. Some suggest that the, the village not only raised pigs for the local population, but they were actually required to supply the Roman army with pork. They were forced to feed the ones that were occupying them. So the drowned pigs not only ruined their livelihood, but there was a threat that the Roman army would punish them for not providing the demanded food. The villagers come to find the formerly possessed man clothed and seated at Jesus' feet. But we are told that when they saw him, they were seized with fear. And they begged Jesus to go and leave them alone. The people had the same reaction as the demons. The possessed man was the same when Jesus arrived. Leave us alone. And I guess I really can't blame them for being afraid. They did not fully understand what Jesus had done. And the threat from their Roman oppressors was real. They may be punished for not providing the food demanded by their overlords. But they also didn't realize the potential for the freedom from oppression that Jesus had brought to them. There's an interesting comparison of where the man in the village end up. The man wants to come with Jesus, but instead Jesus tells him to return to his family and tell them what God has done for him. He had restored the man to community. And he had a narrative that looked forward to a new life. The village looked to the past oppression and stayed there. Even though Jesus had invaded and offered them freedom from oppression. The comparison is relevant for us too. We have been called through baptism into a life of dying with Christ and being resurrected to new life that we can live in even now. We can live as people who look forward to the new life that Jesus is calling us into and is bringing us now. Or we can live in fear, refusing the new life free from oppression that Jesus offers. When we obediently live in Jesus Christ, we will change. But some will be too contented or fearful and choose to stay the way they are. 
The narrative we choose matters because it makes all the difference in how people hear either the living hope of Christ or the hopelessness of past disappointments in the stories we tell about our lives in our congregation. I imagine it was not easy for the community to, the, to accept the message of the formerly possessed man. I believe they watched him carefully for a long time to see if he was really freed. But he had a new story. He had a new life through Jesus. His narrative was joined with Jesus' story. Those D-Day narratives that I watched were about sacrifice, loss, pain. But they eventually led to victory. We, too, have a narrative in Christ that leads to victory over sin and death, ending in eternal life. Like the man in the gospel lesson, Jesus commands us to go and tell what God has done for us. Will we join that narrative? I hope we will be faithful and diligent in this calling. Amen. using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, Guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need.
Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with embellishments who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of home of, in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to be faithful stewards of the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. Bring true freedom in human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, sick, or in need of healing, especially Allie Phillips, Hi. Dolores Goldberg, Dolores. Mark Hundemer, Mark. Ray Neestead, Ray. Annie Malky, Barely Goldberg, Barely. Travis Fisher, Travis. Tom Brinkmeyer, Tom. Betty Holt, Betty. Diane Baneman, Lutz Milhorn, Lutz. Wayne Fox, Wayne. Lindley Crick, and, and any other we now name. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that can clearly recognize your loving presence. Comfort those who are dying and those who mourn the death of a loved one, especially the family of Phil Nash and any other we now name. God of grace, hear our prayer. you hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. We give you thanks for fathers, grandfathers, husbands, and other men who have been and are important to us in our lives, especially those we name. We pray families may be centered of your love and may raise up people who believe in Jesus and are committed to the go his gospel and mission. Accompany those yearning to be fathers. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace. We give thanks for the faithful departed who lies proclaim all you had done for them, especially those we name. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share that peace with one another. In response to God's love and grace, we bring him our offerings.
pray. Blessed are you, Lord of God, maker of all things. Amen. I ask all those who are going to take communion in the pews or in the cars to prepare your elements for communion. salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you O Lord Holy Father through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of you communing in the pews or in the cars, take the bread and eat it. This is the body of Christ given for you.
take the cup and drink it. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we have, we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.